Hey everybody, it's Gauntletx, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another Artifact Remix Draft. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one pick one, which is definitely the Angel of Invention Mythic Rare. So you can play this as a 5-mana 4-3 Flying Vigilance Lifelink, which is absolutely nuts, but you can also play it as a 5-mana 2-1 Flying Vigilance Lifelink, and create two 1-1 one, one servos, and either way, the rest of your board gets plus one, plus one. So if you spread it out, it's a 2-1 Flying Vigilance Lifelink and two 2-2s. Two, um, yeah, this card is just nuts, no matter how you choose to play it. Just incredible, incredible stuff, and absolutely a slam dunk pack one, pick one play. For pick number two, we have a very efficient removal from Candy Grapple, so that's a super high pick. If we want to take another white spell to go with the Angel, we've got decent options like the Mouser for a one-drop that can move all its counters to another artifact creature later. Or the Mandible just this year, which does curve into the Angel invention really well. If you fabricate the servos onto the board, this is going to get a huge lifelink swing out later. I think this removal is good enough to just take it here. I think Candy Grapple is excellent, so I'll roll with that. Um, but Ruin Raider is pretty decent too. Beginning of your end step, if you attack, to reveal the top card of your library, put it into your hand, lose life, go to its mana value. If you've got lifelink in your deck, that can be pretty nice, but obviously in some matchups where your opponent manages to aggro out a little faster than you, like when you're on the draw, this can be a bit of a hindrance, can be painful, but it's good card advantage. I think I'm just going to take the candy grapple, it's just always good, no matter what's going on in the game. Pick number three, Arcbound Prototype's pretty solid, because there are a lot of artifact creatures in the set. You can move the counters around. Actually, Gear Seeker Serpent's insane, though, right? Gotta play a lot of artifacts for this thing, but if you can cast this as like a 5 mana 5 6, this card is perfectly fine, and you only need two creatures on board to do that. Or not creatures, you only need two artifacts on board to do that. Sometimes you have four or five artifacts, and this is a 2 or 3 mana 5 6, which is completely busted, so I think it's actually just Gear Seeker Serpent. There is great card draw to red in the uncommon slot 2 that I want to mention, um, but Gear Seeker Serpent is a stupid card. For pick 4, we've got Hollow Scavenger, one of the better green cards. A lot of the green decks are playing around with food tokens quite well, and Hollow Scavenger is one of the best cards for doing that, being a 5-4 during combat if you sack a food. Cogwork Wrestler is a solid uh, combat trick on a stick little creature here. Pretty good with the Gear Seeker, giving us a cheap artifact to put on the board. Alternatively, the Mist Vault Bridge, just artifact lands in general, also help with cards like Gear Seeker Serpent, even if we don't end up in blue-black. And it's possible we could play blue, black, and white. You can draft a lot of colorless spells, as well as some mana fixing like Cold Steel Heart and Dual Lands to play all three of these colors. I kind of like the idea of, of just taking that Mist Vault Bridge here. Pick five, we've got Vault Scourge. This is good even if you're not playing black, because you can just pay the life, get your 1-1 Flying Lifelinker. So it's good in any deck that can throw plus one plus one counters or equipment onto their creatures. That's kind of a lot of decks in this format, because you have the modular mechanic, you have green cards that give plus one plus one counters, and you have like red and white cards that are equipment. So plenty of ways to buff the thing up. Pretty big fan of the card, I think I'll take that here. The Reality Heist is pretty cool too, that might actually be decent in the set. Pick six, another candy grapple, really late candy grapple there. Really happy with that. Hard evidence pick six is pretty late as well. This is the blue Thraben Inspector, the cheap blocker that draws you a card off the clue token. There's also Razor Tide Bridge for playing all three of these colors. That's really tempting, but I don't think I could take it over another candy grapple. Card is excellent removal. Okay, pick seven. Archaeomender seems like a really good value play in the format with so many artifacts running around, but. There's that Goldmire Bridge for going the full Esper. I'm going to go for it. Pick eight. Uh, really good red equipment with Batter Fist, but also another excellent fixer. So I'm going to go for that. Pick nine. Minstrosity's great early blocker. Really liking how black is looking in this draft pod. The Minstrosity, um, really, really good on the draw, where your opponent is like curving out, because then your two drop trades up into their three mana card and leaves behind a food. So it's a really good uh, defensive card. But it's also a 3-1, so it attacks super well too. Pick 10. All right, we will go ahead and take our first Archaeomender here. If we can get some cheap artifacts 10 up in our graveyard, this will be great value. Pick 11. Not very interested in any of these. Maybe a treasure token could be helpful with the freebooter. 
We do have a double blue card and a double white card drafted already. So we're basically like definitely black. Um, this Vault Scourge is colorless. Um, but Minstrosity double candy grapple, that's three black spells versus two blue, one white. I think our one white spell is as good as both of our <laughs> blue cards combined, though. So for a secondary color, we'll have to just choose as things progress here. Pack two, pick one. If I want to play all three colors, Chrome Courier's fine. Yeah, three mana, one, one, draw you a card when it hits the board. That's pretty good. But Bake Into a Pie is great instant speed removal, and Scrap Heap Scrounger is great if you're aggressive. I think we're probably a little more defensive and controlling and stuff, and we just want the excellent instant speed removal over the uh, can't block like aggro card and keep getting in later. So I'll take the bacon to a pie and just stick to as black as possible for now. Picking our secondary stuff later. Well, there's another chrome courier and there's not much else that looks that good in blue, black, or white, really. I guess disenchant's probably actually good with the quantity of artifacts running around. But Zabaz is like a modular build around and we don't have any modular cards yet. Yeah. So I guess it's Chrome Courier. Just a really nice value play creature. Pick three, get another Gear Seeker Serpent. Let's go. We're actually not that good at flooding the board with artifacts, but we've got the artifact lands at the very least. Hopefully we draft some more later. Mono Skellion's good if you have other ways to put plus one plus one counters on it, but even up front it's pretty decent, so that's kind of cool. I feel like Gear Seeker Serpent's just better though. Pick four. Uh, another Minstrosity gives us another uh, food. Thraben Inspector gives us a clue. So these would both potentially leave us with an artifact to help cast Gear Seekers and stuff. Black is more of a core color than white right now, but we're trying to play a double white card, so we're almost definitely splashing in a good amount of white no matter what. So I think Inspector is super reasonable here. It's also slightly better for grinding out the long game because the card draw instead of the just life gain there. You know, I will go Inspector over Minstrosity. Kind of commit to the full three color at this point. There's Hard Evidence, which is another Inspector, basically. Don't mind if I do. All right, let's sort by the actual mana curve now. So we have Inspector, Hard Evidence, and Scourge for one mana plays, but we're also playing a lot of Tap Lands. Our KO Mender is not looking particularly playable right now. We have like two artifacts that end up in the grave. The Courier and the Vault Scourge. Uh, Old Tech Cloud Guard plays really well with Angel of Invention. And there's not much else on color, so Cloud Guard it is. And I don't think our KO Mender or Freebooter look very good right now. Six, seven, another Cloud Guard or another blue black duel. Wander Strike is fine, but the other three removal spells we have are all more efficient. So I'd rather play those. Really is the fixing or the cloud guard. And grab the cloud guard. I think the Bartolome looks super good for this deck. And that was the black white multicolored card out of that pack. It can sack creatures or artifacts to put a plus one plus one counter on itself. So it's a good like aggressive sacrifice card. But we are not aggressive. Pick eight. Some kind of dirtily blocker, Shipwreck Sentry or Gold Warden's Helm. I guess we could go for Iron Apprentice instead to have more cheap artifacts that could end up in the grave for the Archaeo Mender, but it just really doesn't look like that's going to be the direction we're, we're headed with this deck. I get another white spell here. We're actually getting close to maybe just being black-white. The only real reason we have for blue is the Gear Seekers. I mean, the Chrome Couriers are solid splashes, but they're also actually easy to splash. Gear Seeker is not being the double blue. It's really hard to splash in. Need two sources of the color. And a couple disenchants, maybe. 
I mean, I could see main decking one. I don't know about playing two. Let's throw a Mirror Sire in here. It's just like two Trump blockers in a row. Sweet Tooth Witch is super fine. All right, pack three. What do we have? A Pirate Lord? Yeah, we're not we're not blue red pirates, sadly. So that's not a thing. Fatal Push is pretty cheap removal. Only destroys the cheap stuff, but pretty great. It's instant speed. Fen Holler could be nice. You can tap a bunch of artifacts to play this for cheaper, but we don't have too many food tokens and clue tokens sitting around to help improvise. We've got a few. Um, Deadly Dispute's good when you have expendable tokens. That'd be fine. Cogwork Wrestler's fine. Cheap blue play. I think like Dispute or Fatal Push here. Makes sense to me. The Dispute because the treasure is big. You know what? I'm going to take Dispute actually for the treasure. Pack three, pick two. All right, we've got three indestructible artifact lands. So Tezzeret's Touch is actually just the hotness. If your opponent has bounce spells or exile, they can deal with it. But if they're like green, red, or black, and they just have damage based removal or destroy target creature removal, you now just have an indestructible 5 5 if you put it on one of these lands. So that is a pretty sick combo for the way our deck's looking here. So we'll take that. Sadly, over a Phyrexian Metamorph, which is a really fun, really cool clone. But the Tezzeret's Touch indestructible land combo is pretty brutal. Pack three, pick three. Now we get another indestructible land and fix for our Esper deck. I like the Gold Mire Bridge here. Dead Eye Plunders is pretty big. It's just beef, and it makes some uh, some treasures. Seems good too. I think I'd rather grab the land though. Pick four, another Thraben Inspector. It's pretty excellent. Another Deadly Dispute would be fine. Hidden Stockpile can be fine. Like, you sack a clue, and then in your end step, you get a 1 1 servo, too. Pick five does not look like a ton of great options. Skull Bomb's okay. Bardish is really slow. Let's turn Lessons, fine card draw. I mean, I guess we are on the full Esper at this point. This much fixing. We're trying to hit double blue cards, so it wouldn't be the worst to be playing a blue draw spell, too. You know, I'm going to go for the Skull Bomb. Let's get some bounce. Slow our opponents down a tiny bit, maybe. So Hex Gold Hoverwings, Thraben Inspector, Minstrosity, and Razor Tide Bridge are all beautiful options for us out of this pack. We have four lands right now, so we're on 22 non-lands, four lands. I think all of our non-lands are perfectly solid. I think I'm going to go for more mana. Really fix the mana for a pretty difficult deck mana-wise. We have double black and double blue and double white in here. So dual lands seem like really high picks. Here I'm going to take Candy Grapple over Hard Evidence, but they're both excellent. just feel I could use a little more removal. Now pick eight. Grab that Fen Hauler for another finisher. I've got double Gear Seeker Serpent Angel Invention. It's pretty good. I definitely don't want Scream Puff. I'm actually just going to take more interaction with another Skull Bomb. Okay. I don't think we're playing Eye of Malkator or Moon Snare Prototype. So I think this is just the deck, and it kind of built itself. I don't know if we have enough synergies for Hidden Stockpile. Maybe we do. Let's see, that'd be like the last question here. Yeah, we only need to cut two cards. I guess with the Skull Bombs, now we can throw our KO Mender back in as an option. Because those are easy to end up in the graveyard and pick up. Okay. 43 cards. Gold Warden's Helm doesn't look very good. Stockpile might not be good. And... Not Sweet Tooth, which doesn't really have any synergies, so we probably just like cut these three. And that seems solid. Let's check on the hidden stockpile here. At the beginning of your end step, so it has to be your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield, you create a 1-1 servo. So if we sacrifice a clue, which we can do, 
we sacrifice the treasure, which we can do. That'll trigger. I've got one, two, three, three clues. I've got three clues and a food we can sacrifice. Got two skull bombs. And it doesn't seem unplayable, but it doesn't seem like great because there's plenty of cards in here that don't really do anything with it. You know, like all this stuff. All that bigger creatures. I feel like we have enough spicy stuff we're playing around with already. I'm just going to drop it and call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at the final deck list for today. We're on a nice, grindy, esper y, control -y build. We have a bunch of early creatures with good enter the battlefield effects, so we can get some value off of Thraven Inspectors and Chrome Couriers and stuff in the early game while still trying to trade off or at least chump to stay alive for a bit. Then we've got tons of efficient removal with some candy grapples, a disenchant, and a bacon to a pie. And when we hit the late game, we're trying to just slam down some big Gear Seeker Serpents or our absolute bomb rare angel of invention, or with five of the indestructible dual lands in our deck, might be able to make a 5-5 five, five indestructible to start going to town. So really fun, really different deck today, uh, but we'll see how it all plays out for us as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for game one. I think without the black source, we kind of have to mulligan this, because the Gear Seeker is a super late gameplay with only one artifact in hand. If we don't hit the black source, we're really dead in the water, just cycling a skull bomb and praying. Okay, we've got a source of each color. We actually have the double black for the bacon to apply. We have the perfect mana for the chrome courier. I think we can keep this and ditch the skull bomb here, because we're just going to go tap land turn one. Turn three, we're going to courier. We're not going to do the three mana skull bomb thing. Yeah, pretty happy with this. There's a... Oh, no. All right, we might just get bombed out real quick because Retrofitter Foundry is nasty. In fact, it's so nasty, it's in a bunch of cubes because it's just instant speed. You can dump all your mana into this thing and just keep spewing out some creatures. You get to make a servo that evolves into a Thopter that then evolves into a 4-4, four -four, and you could just keep untapping it later in the game. This is an incredible mana sink that wins basically any long game, and our deck is designed to try to grind out a long game. We are not going to outgrind a Retrofitter Foundry, and they've got Lion Sash. They go turn one Retrofitter Foundry to turn two Lion Sash, and things have gone from bad to worse real fast. Lion Sash, if any permanents end up in the graveyard, is going to become very, very big. But not just that, they can also reconfigure this to equip to any of their other creatures and make that creature insanely massive as well so lion sash yet another rare that's incredibly good at winning the long game which is the one thing our deck's really trying to be able to do well and now we have a super uphill battle to get there like this retrofitter foundry is already getting its first one one here if nothing else i am scared um We've got one, two, three, four, five mana already. We'll just take the Mere Sire. There's secrets for the key to set up some card draw. How much mana is it to do the Thopter part? Just one mana? Yeah, and it keeps getting cheaper and cheaper to upgrade the creature. It's two to get it in the first place, but only one to make it the flyer and zero mana to make it the 4-4. Four -four. Right, another 1-1 one -one on the ground from our opponent, though. Ooh, so that they can affinity out a 1-mana 4-4 four -four with Mirror Enforcer? Seems good. Seems strong. Well, I can bake that into a pie, and then Lion Sash is a 2-2. Two, two. And I have to deal with Lion Sash with something else later. Mm. And if I bake that, I'm taking what, 6 damage now. But all I would have is a chomp if I didn't anyway, if I didn't send in Courier. Eh, maybe we have the tiniest chance in the universe of... 
getting enough flying damage to outrace, but the Foundry can just turn these 1-1s into 1-1 flyers. Now they even have a land they can turn into a 1-1 flyer if they need it with the Blink Moth Nexus. All right, take the Mirror Enforcer damage, go to 17. Got a little more life gain here with Chrome Courier and Bacon to a pie and stuff, so. We can take some swings. Skyship Plunderer, now they've got a flyer that trades into the Cloud Guard, so that potentially ruins that plan, but the top deck Candy Grapple was good here. So I can kill that without having to spend the Bacon to a pie. Oh, they've got the three mana for the untap. Well, no, they they need one mana to turn servos into flyers. And three to untap. So they can't get two 1-1 one, one flyers here. They can only get one 1-1 one, one flyer. So if I do grapple the plunder, I do get in for three. Again, the longer this game goes on, the worst things are going to get for us. They're just going to get even bigger and bigger and bigger artifacts off the foundry. And the lion sash is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we have to do something to get as much damage in as quickly as possible. Which isn't really something our deck can do, as you can see by the very small amount of damage we're currently dealing to our opponent. But we're going to play it out do whatever we can here like maybe we can hit uh our big archangel in the late game surprise everybody gets plus and plus on maybe that does something but we need to hit our own bombs to counteract these in fact the lion sash is incredibly good against our archaeomander this card's actually completely useless now they just keep exiling all the artifacts from our grave or they could just hold one white mana up and whatever I target to return to my hand, they just respond by exiling. It's super rude. This would theoretically have been like a really good draw for a value play, because then we can chump with a courier, pick it up, get some more card draw going, but not against the Lion Sash. Oh, you've got plus two to the whole board, do you? Well, then I'm pretty dead, aren't I? I don't even know what the best blocks here are. I and mean, there's enough permanence in the grave to make this a 3-3, so I'd have to triple block to kill it, in which case I just die if they plus two plus one the rest of the board. I'm pretty dead to plus two plus one to everybody, no matter what, so... Whatever. We'll send a message. Try to kill the Lion's Ash. And get bamboozled. Oh right, it can exile lands. Never mind, I'm a doofus. <laughs> For some reason, I didn't even register that lands are just permanents too. Yeah, so blocking like that, they don't even have to cast their trick. They just use Lion Sash anyway. Well... If it weren't for the Retrofitter Foundry, Tezzeret's Touch would be something. Plus, I just lost my whole board to the Sash, so... I don't actually have enough blocks to, like, attack with Cloud Guard here after using Touch. I block there, take 4, 5, 6, 7. I guess I technically don't die here, unless they can specifically exile or bounce.
And they can exile. All right, they didn't have a trick. They were just super confident in their board earlier. Which is fair enough. Retrofitter Foundry Lion Sash has demolished us there. So, unfortunate matchup there, really. We kind of knew the outcome of the game after turn two. I don't think I played it out perfectly, but I have no idea what I could have done to get anywhere near close winning. I think the only real punt of the game was obviously the triple block on the Lion Sash. I just completely blanked on the fact that it can even just exile lands that we'd milled. It's just really strong. So I guess it was just like chump the two four fours to stop a little more damage, but we still just lose our creatures without even trading into things. Or I guess we could have traded into the one ones. Which is a losing battle because they're just getting more every single turn. I don't know. Doesn't feel winnable, even remotely. Here we are for game two with terrible mana. We're gonna have to mulligan that. This mana is almost as bad. Actually, it's just as bad. Well, we had one color last time. We have two colors this time, but we have no blue spells anyway, so it doesn't matter that we have two colors. I think we gotta just keep six cards here. Like, I can Thraben Inspector to dig a little bit, and we know we can Thraben Inspector into Cloud Guard. I think I'm doing this. I'm gonna go Thraben Inspector, crack the clue, Cloud Guard later, crack the Gnome to Deadly Dispute. Well, our Kaomander is a pretty awkward draw. We have no artifacts yet. Playing against Golgari. Hey, there's the Black Source. Um, would rather crack the clue right now than maybe play the tap land next turn. Because we don't need the Black Source for a long time. We're not going to Deadly Dispute next turn. Defiant Salvager, so that can get pretty big with all the random tokens running around and greedy freebooters at a prime example. That's two sacks to the Salvager, so it's just immediately a 4-4 off of that. Or they could keep the treasure, cast something a little cheaper. Candy Grapple to shoot the Salvager. Yeah, we're still not Archaeo Mendering. So we'll get the Black Source down for our Candy Grapple. For the future. We're down to 17 now from the Salvager, and they have no plays that turn. Interesting. Salvager only works at sorcery speed, so I could just grapple it right now. But if it's only hitting me for three a turn, I can still just expand my board for now with Cloud Guard. Bake into a pie, sure. They're eating my Cloud Guard. Oh, Jesus. The Mirror Sire to go with the Salvager? I'm surprised they haven't used it any more aggressively here. They're still hitting for three. They've got four potential sacks towards it. They're not interested in doing any of them yet. Well, I guess on the plus side, that lets us kill it, because they can only use it at sorcery speed, so I can kill it without having to... Um, sack anything. I guess it's probably safest to grapple just in case they have a trick, or to bargain to the grapple to make it minus five, minus five. But even then, well, these are sick draws. Uh, even then, it's not going to be enough if they have just plus three, plus three, like a giant growth or something. Okay, it's gone. We've got a one, two to block their... One ones. So, I mean, it's our five cards versus their two. Who would win? I mean, we know what our five cards are. They don't know what these are, though, so 
Maybe they're scared. They're not. That one card uh, kind of goes to town. He's carding the artifact land because then I can at least pick it up to Archeo Mender if nothing else. All right, Chrome Courier, we need to find someone to deal with Herald of Anguish immediately, or they have just infinite removal spells off of this, sacrificing their treasures and foods, and we have to discard a card every turn. All right, well, we found Angel of Invention, but I don't have the mana for it yet. But even Angel of Invention, they just sacrifice two artifacts and kill it. I think we just mega lose to this bomb now. Things are not looking good for the Esper deck. It's got Retrofitter, Foundry, Lion Sash, and now we're getting Herald of Anguished. And we could draw one of our other two Candy Grapples or our Bacon to a Pie. We have outs, but we need to hit them fast. Okay. That might be a thing. Let's find out. Respond with the removal while they still can. Yep. Kill the Chrome Courier. So they are heavy into black here, so I don't think it's right to throw the plus one plus one counters on the Angel. The odds of them having their own candy grapple or bacon to a pie or something here are relatively high. So I think we're going to go for the wide board state with the Angel Invention. Uh, doing it pre-combat for one extra point of damage. And let's start jamming. It's a lot of damage if they can't deal with the Angel, but if they can deal with the Angel, at least we still got some servos out of it. Hamlet Glutton gains some life. That is not dealing with the Angel, but it does stop all of the damage on the ground. Which is not ideal. Find Candy Grapple? Well, don't mind if I do. Alright, well now we can just Candy Grapple the Hamlet Glutton. Sack our land to kill it again. Keep all our creatures on board. Oh, they're gonna go for the Crackbacks here. Fair enough, but we are at 11, so we're definitely not dead. Tempting Apple? Oh, boy. So they steal Angel Invention, probably, to gain a little life here. They're at 9. They're going to be at 11? We hit for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We lethal them next turn anyway. If they send both, right? We just lethal them. So they still just have to trump with Glutton next turn. Yeah, they can't they can't attack with both. They're one mana off from killing us with the apple. They just poke us for a tiny bit of life gain. Yeah, alright. Ooh. Opponent got really close there, and they knew it, but we are actually 1-1. One one. I thought for sure we were going to be 0-2 off that Herald of Anguish, but we hit one of our, like, three outs to the Herald and swung things back in our favor with our own Bomb Rare. Very, very balmy start to this draft, but we'll see, see how it progresses as we head into Game 3. Here we are for Game 3.
really need to hit the blue source, but this hand is spicy if we find it. And we have the clue token from Thraven Inspector to do a little bit of digging. Now even if we don't hit the blue source, we've got an Angel of Invention coming up. Okay, Candy Grapple's not bad either. Maybe I should have cracked the clue so that if I hit one of the tapped blue sources, I can still play a blue spell next turn. I just kind of instinctually went for the I can hold up Candy Grapple and sack the clue if I don't need to Candy Grapple play. Which is nice. It's nice to be able to do either of these, but because we have like three tapped blue sources in this deck, we probably should have just drawn the card. Just in case the blue source we hit is a tapped one. But I already played land for turn, so too late now. By the time I noticed it. Okay, Spyglass Siren. That might be annoying enough for us to just candy grapple. If they use the map token on it, we get to counter the explorer and then they don't have a 1-1 flyer to block our 2-1 flying angel of invention. Because again, we pretty much always want to fabricate servos onto the board with Angel. Okay, they're not cracking the map yet. Then I think I wait. Surgical Skull Bomb is the draw. It's another blue spell, basically. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know what? This time I will crack the clue. Quote-unquote crack the clue. I'll crack the Skull Bomb before I play my land for turn, in case I hit a tapped blue source. And then I can still play an untapped land, hold up candy grapple if I don't. Okay, we hit it. So we can play an untapped source and we can play the blue source. Cool. Now we are set up. We can play 5-5 five, five Indestructibles, but they're on blue, so they can probably bounce it and we'll be sad. Play Chrome Courier for card draw. And most importantly, we can just play Angel Invention next turn. Get a very wide, very powerful board. Plundering Pirate. 3-2 plus a treasure. You got it. Send in the Siren. You got that too. I'm relatively likely to grapple this Siren later, but still not 100%, so I'm just going to hold. I don't need to grapple it till turn 6. That's when I'll be attacking with a 2-1 Flying Vigilance Lifelink. And I can play a 3-drop and a grapple in that same turn. So it'll fit into the curve fine. And there's always the chance they just shoot the Angel of Invention with some kind of removal. And then it doesn't matter. Then I don't need to candy grapple the siren, because I'm no longer trying to get in with a flyer. We are definitely splitting out the servos, because a lot of red burn is going to be able to just do three damage, and it's only going to have three toughness even if I put the plus and plus one counters onto it. If they had a one-mana instant speed way to kill the Angel there, that would have been really nasty for me, because they could kill the Angel and the Inspector by blocking with the Pirate. They did not, though. Alright, here comes the map token, showing off a Cartographer's Companion that gets milled. Because they are looking for lands. There's the Flame Discharge, 2 damage to that, and that kills it. There's an X mana burn spell, so Angel Invention was dead no matter what. Send in the team? Yeah, I'll race. I could trade two one ones for the 3 2, that's not, not a bad trade. But I think I race here with more life gain with Chrome Courier. If we pick up an artifact, right? Cloud Guard now. So I could play Chrome Courier and Tezzeret's Touch, but it would be a tapped Tezzeret's Touch. Land. 
could alternatively play the Tezzeret's touch attack with it and still hold up Candy Grapple. It's kind of spicy. Kind of like a haste creature, that's how we win this race. Seems fine. Send in the squad and candy grapple one of their attackers next turn. Cogwork wrestler. That's annoying, but it's not particularly good here. Just annoying, really. Just kill A11. Sure. They're down to 10. Oh my god, what do you do? Create two 1-1 one, one Flying Thopters as a minus two? Plus one, scry one, draw a card. Minus four, only minus four. All the artifacts get plus one, plus one, and cost one less to cast. Well, that's pretty strong. I can beat you with it. Hmm. Let's see where this trade of thought They're at 10 life, though, so I think we have to just keep attacking their face. Which means letting's a Healy ultimate. I'm only attacking with a single 5-5. Five five. They can trump that with anything. Yikes. Let's clear out the flyer, because we're about to cast more flyers. So I guess it's like chump. Chump the 5-5, five, five, kill one of our smaller creatures. Take one if I attack all three. It's probably okay. Let's Chrome Courier and see if we can draw into something relevant. Sure, Deadly Dispute. That is actually relevant, because now I just sack whatever they're going to kill. I guess if I'm only going to break through for one damage anyway, I might as well stop them from ulting, right? Maybe. I don't know, because like then if I send this all that way, they can just like kill both of these and let the five in and let Sahili die, and then that was pretty great value. Like, Sahili is doing a lot of work here either way. I'm just going to go for the face. All right. Take the five here. Find a bake into a pie. I don't know, the Thopter ability on Sahili is like so bad for us too, right? But like the only thing that we accomplish by sending everything at Sahili is doing one damage to her, and if she's taken one damage, she can still minus and make the two Thopters. And get the two chump blockers. We just would have like actually forced a chump if we sent everybody at Sahili. But she'd definitely still be around. Just the Cogwork Wrestler wouldn't be. They're in a plus again. Alright. No Thopters yet. Song Shaper. And a mirror enforcer. So they've got nothing in the sky. So I can get in for one damage here. Candy grapple? Could kill two of their creatures. If I kill two of their creatures and send everything at their face, I also kill Cogwork Wrestler. They're sitting there with only a Plundering Pirate. 
But then they make two thoppers from Sahili and like reestablish a board from there. This feels like we're losing. Because if I just sit here, they are getting value over time. But if I send all in, they're really close to a lethal crackback from two hasting thopters or from giving all the artifact creatures plus one plus one. I guess it's probably our best bet to play a cloud guard to have more flyers and then try to keep both of these up to kill two flying blockers. Because we can hit for one here to put them to four and then we have four power in the sky to hit them with next turn. And like I can chump block with a gnome and I can candy grapple. To survive here. But we have lethal power in the sky and we have the tools to kill both of the flying trump blockers they can make off Sahili. We know that every card in their hand is a spell here, so there's just a lot that can go wrong. So go for the Thopters. Like making masterpieces is hard. Reality highs for only two mana. Find the best artifacts in the top seven to put in their hand. Probably looking for more flyers. A cogwork wrestler would actually be really nasty here. They got a flyer with the enthusiastic mechanauts, and now they have to attack with one of the thopters to die. Otherwise, they have three flying blockers up, and I can't kill them all. I don't, I don't think they're going to attack with one of the Thopters because we've got a 3-2 flyer up to block it. Looks stable from our opponent, I guess, unless we top deck another removal spell. I kill both Thopters and then top deck removal for the next one. Yeah, and they're just killing us in two swings. Yeah, we straight up have to top deck removal for another flyer. It's over. Yeah. The removal and the flying blocker. Alright. Now there's a negative... Negative 50% chance. Hold up. What are they holding up with this treasure? If it is not... A counterspell, they might be dead here. Um, the main counter in this format is counter unless I pay three, which even if I candy grapple here, I don't have the three mana up, so. If I do four mana next turn, I'd have the three up, but then when I candy grapple after bake into a pie, I'd have... Let's see, one, two, three, four, I've got three extra up. Then I play land for turn, I've got two with the three extra up. I can play around Metallic Rebuke, actually. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I need three extra mana. Here's one, two, three. Yeah, if I wait till my turn, I'm playing around. Metallic Rebuke. And that's the best we can do. If it's another counter spell that's just counter period, we lose. If it's instant speed removal, we lose. If they just played the Mechanaut, we lose. Got the three up if it's Rebuke. And if it's Rebuke, they have to tap the flyer anyway. It's Rebuke! What? Why did it auto-pay with the land? Why did it pay with the treasure?
Well, here we are for game four. Kind of want to resign the draft now. <laughs> that was such a disappointing blowout. That auto tapper just demolished my soul. Uh, let's disenchant this thing, but oh, I don't have white. Let's candy grapple this thing before it can kill any of our cards. Before we play any two toughness or lower stuff. I can't believe the only shot we had to win that game was our opponent not playing the third flying blocker, and then they didn't play the third flying blocker, and Auto Tapper still was like, you know what? Nah, they win. They kill the tracker before they play any more artifact creatures, as you tend to want to do with the modular cards. Okay, this is really threatening. If they have cheap one, two mana cards, play three spells in one turn, they just go crazy with that. But they need a lot of cheap cards to do that. But it does make it a removal spell on a stick. Four power creature, deals four to any target. Kills our cloud guard for free. The dowsing device, that's one spell. Oh my god, is it a two mana and a one mana spell here? Lion Sash is two spells? Lion Sash, by the way, I literally just lost to this earlier today. They didn't actually buff it up that much, so I'm more lost to the Thopter Foundry thing, but... Well, let's take five. Because I think if they had a third spell to cast this turn, they would have done it pre-combat to trigger Ripley. And... If they don't, then they're basically never going to trigger this because they only have one card left. Which means that it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so this Lion Sash is already essentially a 2-2. I think we're just going to disenchant that thing. Actually, yeah, we're just going to disenchant that, so let's just get the extra one point of damage in. Doing it pre-blocks. Alright, well I cast three spells in one turn. Good thing that is one-sided. Doesn't care if I cast three in one turn. Chrome Courier is the draw. Pre-combat that in case we draw something that affects the combat. Uh, not really. I'm gonna go for another clue token here, make sure we don't run out of gas. Could have gained a little life if we went for the Vault Scourge, but... Just gonna make sure I have plenty of action yet to come. Uh, which actually means I don't have the White Source up, so we just crack the clue for now. Demand answers. Sack the device, draw two. That is spell one. Alright, well, no three spells there. That is the concession from our opponent. Even if they did, it wasn't going to be enough damage to kill us. Just clears out one of our creatures and slows down the kill on them. So we are now 2-2, heading into game five. Here we are on the play for game five. Got pretty good mana, we just need a few more lands as the game progresses, but we're doing great on our colors. I'm gonna actually just throw this Vault Scourge down immediately, because if we hit a basic, I could Tezzeret's Touch the Vault Scourge instead of a land. Slight risk to this, but we don't really want to Tezzeret's Touch the land until we have a bunch of mana anyway. And if they don't have the cheap removal, this does just straight win the game really quick. So 
So I don't know. I feel like Tezzeret's Touching a Vault Scourge is pretty much just as good as an indestructible land a lot of the time. Because a 5-5 five, five flying lifelink is insane. They don't have the removal yet. Let's go. We got a Vault Scourge and a Dream. Ooh, that Gear Seeker is real cheap. It's not quite cheap enough yet. It's very close. Hard Evidence. Dispute away the Crab and play Gear Seeker next turn. Guess I'll wait on the Dispute. So I can't cast the Gear Seeker right now either way. We get some food tokens to buy some time, or are they getting some treasure to ramp into something? Get the treasure token. Be very careful how you tap things when you have treasure tokens. <laughs> Sometimes your 5-5 five five will get auto-tapped instead of the treasure. Phyrexian... Metamorph? That will be a 1-1 one, one Vault Scourge and not a 5-5, five, five, so that's not going to work how they want. I think, yeah. It's a 1-1 one, one Vault Scourge, so we're good. That still gives them a chump block, which definitely buys them some time. Um, since I want to sack the crab anyway, I'm going to do this. Not that we really need to stop any damage here. It's just like, well, I'm about to sack this anyway, so here we go. Well, now I've got the candy grapple to just clear the flyer out of the way and not let it slow me down. And we got the two mana 5 6. I don't know how good Gear Seeker Serpent would have been in any of the other games, because I think this is the first time we drew it, but uh, two mana 5 6 is very good. Yeah, there's the concession from our opponent. They were on a heavy black deck, so it is uh, really unfortunate for them that they didn't draw much removal. Well, any removal, honestly. So, pretty lucky game there. They didn't hit the removal, but it was fun from our side of the table. 5-5 five, five Vault Scourge, 2 mana 5-6. We got to do some ridiculous things, and we are now 3-2. and 4-1 and one in my heart, though. 4-1 and one if Auto Tapper was not our enemy. All right, here we are on the play. Incredibly slow hand, but our mana's great. We just need another white for the angel. And our deck's pretty slow normally uh, anyway, so we will keep. Playing against mono black for now. There's the second white source. Let's go. Gonna angel it up turn five. Sit here playing interaction for now. Play a skull bomb, candy grapple, whatever they play, and then bounce something with skull bomb in the future, maybe. Depends how scared we are of whatever they cast this turn, whether we're gonna grapple it or bounce it. Alloy Mirror, let's just bounce that. As we still slow down the mana ramp this way. Drawn to a Minstrosity for the future. And if their best play this turn is to just play the Alloy Mirror again, then I'm really tempted to kill it. Yeah, if they're going to do that, that kind of tells me that they really need the Alloy Mirror for mana, so I'm going to kill it instead of playing Angel right now, and I'll play Angel next turn. Right, because if they had a fourth land, they would just like play the fourth land, play a, f a four drop, and just be like, alright, we're cool. Uh, whenever they sack clues, they get 1-1s. One That's fine.
they have no clues yet. And we have a ton of damage on board thanks to the Angel. All right, there's the removal for the Angel, but we still have six power on board. That's still a two-turn kill. Courier finds us a Gear Seeker Serpent, which is a two-mana 5-6 again. Uh, I don't have three blue sources, though, so I don't get to cast it this turn. Dang it. Well, next turn I get to play a two-mana 5-6. Yeah, I had to spend my other blue on the Chrome Courier. Ovia Pashiri, pretty sweet rare, but you need a lot of mana to play around with that. Our opponent does not have a lot of mana right now. Okay, solid blocks for our opponent at least. I'm still going to send the team in for the maximum amount of damage. To speed up our flying kill with Chrome Courier. Two more swings to get there. And, of course, Gear Seeker Serpent could just be unblockable, so if they don't deal with the Serpent, they're dead to that card alone. There's cast down on the serpent, but we have a lethal with the rest of the board, and there's the concession from our opponent. We're now officially 4-2. We did make it to a positive win rate run, despite our best efforts and the arena auto shuffler or auto shuffler, auto tapper's best efforts against us. So very nice stuff for this deck. That's like a that'd be a 5-1 in a paper draft. <laughs> um so we take those, yeah. Positive win rate. See how far we can take it from here. All right, here we are on the play again for game seven. Oh, it's Tiny Bones. That reminds me, I gotta get the, I gotta do the pre-order because Tiny Bones is so cool. Okay, I could hold up Disenchant this turn, but I think it's better to just hard evidence and get all our tap lands out of the way. Pretty unlikely they play something I really want to disenchant. Conclave Mentor, uh-oh. Doubles up the plus one plus one counters they're, they're putting. It doesn't really double up, it just adds one whenever they put counters on things. Still a big deal. Well, I know what I'm keeping. Angel of Invention is back. This card can just, like, pop off. If they have the right card to go with it, like a Ridge Scale Tusk or something, to put a plus one plus one counter on the whole board, then we're just going to die quick. Bone Splitter is another one of those cards that is going to try to make us die quick. Um, I could kill this with Chrome Courier, but then the Mentor gets two plus one plus one counters. And then it's a 6-4 coming at us, so I think I'm just soaking up one damage here. Okay, I can crack the clue and hold up a disenchant. That feels like the play. Okay, Minstrosity is a little better than holding up disenchants. For sure I can disenchant a Bone Splitter, but I might be able to trade Minstrosity into Conclave Mentor, which is definitely better. Uh, so it's a 5-4? That's not that big of a deal. Yeah, not the scariest Conclave Mentor curve out there. I'm fine with that one. Alright, well, let's get rid of this thing. It threatens to do a lot throughout the game. Ooh, Gear Seeker is so cheap. This card is broken. Um. Oh, well, I guess I made my decision there. <laughs> I was going to say, I think I'm still maybe supposed to Angel Invention, but then I didn't play my second white source, so. We Gear Seeker and hold up Disenchant. 
Which is what I was considering there. I'm like, I can Gear Seeker and hold up Disenchant. That's pretty big too. I think I should have still just angeled. But I didn't play the planes. Spooky. Tough cookie. Could disenchant the tough cookie, but if they don't have a combat trick in their hand and I get to disenchant this bone splitter, I can kill the augmenter without even losing a creature. Which is just disgusting. It works, let's go. That was huge. Uh, now I still have the candy grapple to deal with the tough cookie anyway. My lord. Things are going swell. You know I have enough blockers up, it's probably not bad to send in the 1-4. It is just going to bounce off a tough cookie, but maybe they'll be worried about me doing something weird. One mana minus one minus one, who knows. Mirin Bardish is the play. That does not interact with our Angel or our Serpent at all, so... 2, 8, 9, 10 unblockable damage if we want. I'm just going to send everybody in because I've got the double gra grapple to uh, ruin any multi-blocks on the Gear Seeker Serpent that they might try to do. You know what? I'm sending in the crab. We're sending in the team and we're sending a message. Okay, this is pretty fine, but I will go ahead and save a servo. Another land from our opponents that are a little flooded over there. One card left in hand. And it is a Bloom Hulk, which is a good card, but it is not going to be enough to save them. They're at essentially 11 life right now, because they have two mana to sacrifice one of their foods. And we can hit for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in the sky, and one on the ground. Actually hit for a little more than that if I can to grapple away a blocker, so might as well do that. Still have the six man up for Gear Seeker by sacking a land. This way I can eat the food. And this is mega lethal either way. All right, we are officially five and two now in the money out of this draft. Whatever happens from here, we're leaving with more gems than it costs to enter. So super, super sweet stuff from the Esper Nonsense pile. Excellent, excellent draft as we head into round eight. All right, here we are on the play for round eight. If we just keep drawing Angel of Invention, some solid things might keep happening. So we'll see if we can keep it up here. Right. Ooh, I can Tezzard's touch this clue. Just full aggro curve into the angel. 
I really think that is perfectly solid, honestly. Go full aggro here on the play. Okay. Down to 13. Some byway courier for a chump blocker. A deadly dispute for us. Sack the three win inspector since that can't get in well anymore. Or I can just candy grapple the blocker and get six damage in again. I think I'd rather sack three win inspector and just send in the five five here. Try to hit land for turn. I do not, but I still get the treasure towards the angel, so any untapped land casts it next turn. Four mana, that's bacon to a pie mana if they've got it. It's a candy trail. Now they could candy grapple, sacking the candy trail. They need to bargain that away. Another byway career. Now they're going to go for a double block, maybe? Okay, so we didn't hit the angel mana. I can play a 5-6, or I can just candy grapple when they try to block one of these. Or when they try to double block. I think I'm just going to candy grapple. Keeping this treasure for Angel of Invention. There's Defiant Salvager. They can actually make that a 5 5. If they sack all their clues and give up on late game card advantage, make it a 6 6 if they sack a land. So they don't even trade here. They're going to do it? Yeah, they're going to sack the land, make it a 6-6. Six, six. All right. It's a play for sure. There's the angel mana, though. So now mine's a 6-6 six, six as well. You just get that thing out of the way. Goodbye, Tezzeret's touch friend. You've done plenty of work. You're out a ton of stuff. And there's the concession from our opponent. We are now 6-2, and two, heading into the final boss with this deck. But I just can't get it out of the back of my head that we would just have a 7-win run by now. If either I didn't let Auto Tapper pay for the mana cost because Auto Tapper tapped our creature, or if I just let the Rebuke resolve, but... Obviously, I was like, well, I have the three mana. There's no reason to let this resolve. Like, they're dead either way, but I might as well pay the three because I can crack the treasure. So, yeah, I guess if we let Rebuke resolve, we wouldn't have been in any risk of auto tapper also. So here we are. Our second shot at a seven win run. Hopefully we can make up for that. Uh, the auto tapper blunder here and find the seventh victory. I will be very <laughs> Very sad if uh, if we go six and three because of an auto tap blunder, but we'll see see how it pans out for us as we head into the final battle. We're on the play with an excellent start. There's no black source here, but there's only one black card in the hand anyway, so it should be fine. Especially with Chrome Courier to do some digging, try to find the source we're looking for. The Gear Seeker Serpent's going to be insanely cheap this game. It's already only 4 mana for a 5-6, and it's just going to get cheaper as the game progresses. 
It's going to be a 2 mana 5 6 again, probably, when we cast it. Here's Chrome Courier. Now the Serpent's only 3 mana. We look for the Black Source. We don't find that, but we find something pretty good. Angel of Invention. We just literally never stop drawing it. I mean, we've got a lot of good card draw, card selection off of cards like the uh, the Chrome Courier. That does help draw it very consistently. Uh, do I want to play a Gear Seeker Serpent or do I want to bounce the Dragon Edge? I can only do one. I have to imagine it's better to just play a Gear Seeker Serpent. Chrome Courier from our opponents. They've got a Chump Blocker, at least. Great little value play. Picks up a Waylaying Pirates. That's actually a big deal. The stun. To stun our 6-7 that we can give Unblockable to. Is going to be a, a really good for their blocks. And buying some time against this Angel. Oh, they could have Metallic Rebuke here. That'd be pretty nasty. I don't think we can wait till we have eight mana to play around Metallic Rebuke. But if they have it, then uh, then they've got us here. Because they can improvise tapping uh, artifacts to cast it. So tap the Terrarian and the Chrome Courier. Okay, no Metallic Rebuke it looks like, luckily. Cogwork Wrestler? Alright. That's fine. Stop two damage and get a chump in. No chump. Take the full six. I like it. I'm happy with that over here. Time to waylaying pirates the gear seeker serpent down. Are they doing something else? They're looking at the Serpent and doing something about it. They're going to capture it with some Legax, which gives them some plus one, plus one counters on their board to make their blocks a little better. Actually make the Double Striker pretty scary. Six damage off that thing. Three power Double Strike. Pretty cool. We might end up bouncing that later. So, Courier for Courier is not a bad trade. Courier for Angel Invention is pretty horrible, though. So, I could bounce, like, Dragon Engine right now so I could send in all the ground troops here and get a little more damage in. I could still play a 2-drop like Mirsire alongside, but I think Cloud Guard's going to be a very good play. So, I'm just going to hit a little less hard and hold off on the bounce for now to play the old tech Cloud Guard. Chromatic Star. And Static Net. Exile the Angel and gain life. That is super bad for me. Can this bounce my own creature? It can. I could bounce my Gear Seeker Serpent. And try to get unblockable damage in in the end. Okay, here comes some big double strike. I guess there's not really reason not to chump with the crab. Unless I just want to chump with it later. Ooh, candy grapple. If I just... I can't candy grapple. I don't have a black source. Never mind. I was going to say, if I just candy grapple the flyer, I can send in with the whole team, which is pretty good. I am really looking for a black source, though. So... I think I'm lack looking for a black source badly enough to crack a clue here rather than bounce something with Skull Bomb yet, because I really don't want to give them a Courier ETB again. Not a black source, but it gives me another clue to do a little more digging. I 
I can trade a 3-2 flyer into a 2-2 flyer and get a bunch of other damage in. Lose a 1-1 to hit for 3. Might not be enough damage to be really worth it here. Yeah, probably not. We probably just have to start grinding things out. And just sit here for a little bit. Our opponent's doing some digging of their own with a stern lesson. Draw two, discard a card, and get a tapped power stone for more mana. Alright, I don't see a huge reason not to jump with Mere Sire now. There's their own two mana gear seeker. There's the black source for candy grapple. It's not ready yet. It will be ready next turn, which is a big deal. And we can candy grapple the flyer and start hitting for four in the sky every turn. Yeah. Another three, but Inspector, well, that's our play for the turn, then. Like, I could Skull Bomb the Serpent. But if they want to spend six mana to give it unblockable, they can be my guest. And if they don't, we have infinite chump blockers right now. We do have a Disenchant in our deck we could draw into. Disenchanting Static Net would be filthy. Alright, they are finally going to stun the Cloud Guard, which means that Candy Grapple on Courier next turn is less good. But it is still good. I feel like stopping 6 damage is worth a 1-1 one, one. still. Oh, it's not their end step yet. We're moving to regular combat. Oh, whatever. I didn't have other instants to hold up anyway. No, they hit two gear seekers. I've got another in here, but I don't need the second one. Yikes. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well. I do that on attacks here. I'm not even really hitting them that hard right now. So I feel like I use this as a blowout on blocks, right? We candy grapple one of their threats. Save our Angel of Invention and have just infinite super big blockers. Could also disenchant the Captured by Legax instead. But I feel like that is worse. Okay, let's see, we'll have four, five, six, plus uh, four, we'd have ten damage in the sky if I fabricate all the counters onto the angel, so it wouldn't be lethal in the sky next turn, but I can probably manufacture lethal just by attacking with everybody. Okay. So we're going to be on K 
handy grapple courier for no flying blockers. Disenchant static net to get angel of invention. If we can do it in the end step, it's harder for them to play around it if I can afford to. They're going to have two blockers up currently if I kill the courier. So block the two biggest creatures. Be like a couple two power creatures. They take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So to hit for twelve, I need eight creatures. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll get three more next turn. I think. I can oh no, I've got Skull Bomb too. So I think I can afford to chump with one 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 and still kill them with the wide angel in the end step. I could not chump and go to two. That is very risky though against like combat tricks plus a plus one counter stuff. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna chump the six, take the rest, and try to surprise kill by clearing out a blocker with candy grapple in their end step. Getting Angel Invention back in the end step so that none of them are summoning sick next turn, and then also Surgical Skull Bombing a blocker. And uh, it's all up to what they've got in hand here for their last two cards. Oh, I should have Disenchanted first in case of Metallic Rebuke specifically. Because I have to do this during the end step. Otherwise, uh, they're summoning sick. Oh, am I about to get got because I didn't disenchant first? Please, no. No metallic rebuke. No. They're looking around. Okay, no metallic rebuke. That was almost a bad punt. Metallic rebuke has me living in fear. Okay, well, I am super mega uber dead to instant speed removal on Angel. But otherwise, I super mega kill them. Ooh, zero blockers? Sure. Oh no, I don't want to bounce Cogwork Wrestler, actually, because they just replay it. Yeah, never mind. Never mind about that. I guess I could pre-combat Deadly Dispute here for one last option. Okay, crack Chromatic Star and dig. And they don't find me out. Okay. Gary last game, sloppy last turn. But we do find the seven win run. We are seven and two. And that, uh, that Metallic Rebuke auto-tap punt just spices up the draft, makes it a 7-2 instead of 7-1. It doesn't pull us away from a full 7-win max prize out draft. So that is awesome. Really sweet to draft like the polar opposite of our first deck here. We went red-green, very few artifacts, just angry at the artifacts, blowing them up and stuff, into Esper artifacts. We've played all five colors now. And uh, played some very different decks. This one is just digging for Angel of Invention, really. Or Gear Seeker Serpents. We drew, I feel like we drew Gear Seeker Serpent like less often than Angel of Invention, even though we have two serpents. Um, but the times where we did draw, this was always like almost as, as explosive as the Angel. It was just so cheap and so big and get unblockable damage in. That was awesome as well. And the Tezzeret's Touch was a great win condition as well, getting the kill with the Vault Scourge, getting so much damage early that one game that we just animated a clue with it. And of course, the one game we got to do the indestructible thing with it was cool as well. Uh, and we could have won, but we accidentally tapped the land that was a 5-5, so that was slightly sad. Uh, Disenchant played incredibly. Really happy with the main deck Disenchant here. Um, it was pivotal in our last victory, obviously. But it always had a target, at least. Um, biggest underperformer? Probably our Mender. Um, 
just didn't really have the skull bombs with the Archaeum under that often. Just had to like play it as a 2-3. Never got to pick up a Chrome Courier with it. We had it against some Lion Sashes that could just exile the grave. Um, I don't know about biggest overperformer. Probably Disenchant. I was skeptical about it. I was like, probably run one and it's fine. But I feel like you could probably run multiples and definitely get away with it in this format. Alternatively, biggest overperformer goes to Gear Seeker Serpent, but I was pretty sure that this thing was awesome because I felt miserable every time my opponents cast against me. And, uh, and yeah, it's just incredible. It's just the Stone Cold Nuts. Super, super fun run. Super sweet draft. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.